All right, Nick, let's talk about one of our favorite teams to talk about. This is a team that we're always very, very impressed with some of the stuff they do, and that is no different in today's story, and that's none other than the Kansas City Chiefs, Nick. This is a team that always seems to be making the right moves. They're always just like one small step ahead of the competition, and that is why they've been so consistently good for the past five, six years here. They've been an unstoppable force in the AFC, a lock pretty much to make the AFC championship game every single year. Obviously, they've been a couple Super Bowls in that time as well. But Chiefs fans, this is an excellent team you have. There's so many bright spots all over it, but there's always a little bit of room for improvement, and that's what we want to know today in the comments below. If you could grab one player off of a team, any team in the NFL, to kind of bolster this Chiefs roster, who would it be? What player would you grab off of any other NFL team to add to your Chiefs roster? Let us know in the comments below. But uh, Nick, uh, the Chiefs, have they been up to any smart moves lately? It seems every week we talk about something smart they've done. And look, neither you or I are big Chief homers. We just recognize greatness, recognize intelligence. That's why we talk about the Chiefs a lot, because they do a lot of things really well. And there's just another example coming out after the victory over the L.A. Chargers. They moved to 8-2, and two, have a stranglehold on the AFC West. And this was kind of buried a little bit in a piece by NFL.com, but I think this speaks volumes to how the Chiefs are so scary good and, and once again the top contender in the AFC. So this is from NFL.com. I'm going to read it here for a little bit. It says, Reed said Kansas City, talking of course about Coach Andy Reed, said Kansas City rotates in all of its newer players during practices, going all the way back to training camp. All of these guys' growth was always going to be critical for the Chiefs this, se this season, and the fact they are now able to contribute at the most critical moments and the biggest games, meaning that the loss of a player as dynamic as Hill, losing Tyreek Hill, has been reduced to a blip for the Chiefs, who are again functioning as the league's best, most consistent offense. Of course, if you look at the game, obviously Pacheco had 107 rushing yards, Sky Moore 63 receiving yards, Watson with 67 receiving yards, MVS just had the one reception, but it was a big catch uh, to start their two-minute drive that well, went to go ahead and take the lead at the end of the game. So, Miles, I want to talk about that just real briefly before I hand it over to you. It is extremely rare for a, a head coach with his offense, with his ones, his first string offense, to rotate in a lot of young, inexperienced guys, right? We don't see it very often in the NFL. When I played in college, that did not happen, right? You had your starters, you had your young guys. If the freshmen came in and they were really good, they'd rotate in with the two second string, maybe work their way at the full second string, and maybe get a play here or there with the first string. Very rare it didn't happen. You don't see it happen very much in the NFL either because they're so mandated on how long practices can be and things like that. You just normally see the ones go with the ones and the twos goes with the twos. That's just how it works. But Andy Reid here, again, this is Chiefs doing things smart, understanding with Tyree O'Kill gone. They bring in a lot of new players in the offseason. They're thinking we're going to have to rely on a lot of young guys. Let's get them into the fold early. Let's get them that timing, that repetition, and we're seeing it pay off, right? Some of these guys started slow, looking at like maybe like a Sky Moore, but he's starting to pick up his game. Pacheco's getting better and better and better. Uh, obviously, that kick return miscue aside. So when you look at what the Chiefs did with Andy Reid in the offseason, how he structured practices, rotating these young guys in, it's playing dividends now, Mize. This is really impressive for the Chiefs. I mean, are, are they just a step ahead of everybody? Is, is Andy Reid basically being like a sort of Bill Belichick kind of thinking here? Yeah, Nick, I mean, uh, I think it's even on a higher level than that at Could this be, point. Because yeah. uh, you look around this Chiefs team uh, in general. Uh, let's, let's just start at the surface. Uh, rookies who are starting. You got Trent McDuffie. Uh, you got yeah. Leo Chanel. You got Karlaftis. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we talk about Pacheco. He's not necessarily the starter, but he's getting a huge role, and I think he probably will end up starting. Um. You've got Sky Moore, who's starting. He's a key role on special teams as well, Nick. But then you look at guys who haven't even been on the team uh, last year. and You look at uh, MVS. You look at Kadarius Tony, You looked at Juju. Uh, you look at all these guys. This Chiefs team looks way different than it did in the past years, but yet all of these guys are able to come in, rotate in, and contribute when they're needed most. And I think that's uh, attributed to this uh, Andy Reid method of working these guys in with the ones. you got to play with the people who you're going to play with. I think that's going to yield you the best results. Uh, give your guys who you think, if they have a chance to be on the first team, let them roll with the ones every so often. It's not going to do anything but help you. I think this is a genius move by Andy Reid and the Chiefs, and I just think this shows uh, you know, that 
willingness to like say, hey, everyone on this team is going to be a contributor. Everyone is going to be able to practice at the highest level so that when they come in, they can play at the highest level, Nick. Yeah, and there's one thing I want to bring up here because so many times in the NFL, you see it, a team loses a key receiver or a key tight end and the offense just falls apart, right? Your Baltimore Ravens are, are kind of an example of that. Rashawn Bateman, when he was healthy, they're an explosive dynamic passing game. He obviously gets hurt and that explosive Gone. dynamic passing game goes away. Right. And so the Chiefs have battled through some injuries. Right. Juju obviously coming back from the concussion. Uh, Tony injured himself against the Chargers. Right. They've had injuries and things like that to overcome. But because they inserted those young guys and rotated them early, they're able to have huge performances in big division games like they did against the Chargers. And again, it's just those little quiet moves you don't hear about in the offseason. Again, that was that wasn't the story. That wasn't the highlight of the story. That was kind of buried down deep into the weeds there. But I think that's the real meat behind the Chiefs success here. Those little genius moves right there continue to pay dividends for Chiefs and that's why they're just so brutally tough to beat in the AFC.